and welcome to learn ADS in five minutes. This tutorial 16 and this tutorial will talk about how to use sliders while doing multi-dimensional data processing. Recall in tutorial 15 we talk about array indexing and how to get dependency uh, matrices or information for a particular measurement. So we were able to you know manipulate these array indexes and look at the data and you will start from here and see how can we make it more realistic, more understandable. So while we were talking about dealing with individual indexes to filter out the, the data we are looking at, and now notice when you are in this multidimensional data processing, each of these fields have a, you know array of its own and you can manipulate it the way you want. For example, instead of just having one inductor value combination because here the second dimension is array, I could also do something like zero colon colon five. Now start treating each of these fields as individual fields. So when I'm writing zero to five, that means I want to go from index number zero to five and by default the step is one. And if we click, we actually see overall six plots which are referring to six value combination of this myl. So this way, you know, multiple things can be done. However, as we were discussing, it's kind of difficult to know what value of these parameters are, are being used. To make our job simple and more intuitive, we can use sliders. So to insert a slider, you go to insert and we have a slider option. And once we click anywhere on the screen, now I have everything which I can assign to the slider. So in this case, I would assign my C first, and not for any other preference, just because my C is the outermost variable. And once we put my C, you can see the slider, and on an x-axis, you have the value of capacitor. If you recall, we started capacitor C from five picofarad to 50 picofarad in a step of five. So that's what the slider depicts. Now, same way, we can insert a new slider and click somewhere on the screen and this time we will use my l so whenever a slider is placed notice there is always a marker on that slider so right now it's m1 so if we move the slider you can see the the marker location is changing and we can set this step because we know the values are moving in a step of five in both cases so i can double click on the slider and the plot options in x-axis instead of to scale so right now it's like a step of five already so that's quite cool and if you want to move this slider we can also go and set the value like we want right so in both cases it's kind of working okay now we can use the slider information because any marker on your plot gives you x-axis and y-axis both values so instead of using this zero zero here we can use the simple syntax so for the outermost variable, which is belonging to my C, I need to use this M1 marker. And the simple syntax to use is marker name, underscore the variable name, which in this case is my C. So M1 underscore my C underscore index. That means I need to read the index when the marker M1 is placed on value five. And that's what I would like to have here. So if I click, somewhere outside it is basically reading that value now if i move this marker you can see the curve starts changing because newer and newer index is getting passed to our data and this makes our job much easier because when we look at this marker we can clearly see what c value are we talking about and when we move uh, this marker to some other location what value we are talking about so a job is much much more refined Similarly, for the second index, we can go ahead and plot M2 underscore my L underscore index. So hopefully there's no complication in remembering the syntax. M2 underscore my L underscore index is a simple thing. Now using those um, combinations, we can go ahead and look at the data the way we want and completely manipulate so remembering some of these common things um, you know helps us quite a lot when we deal with such complex data and we want to extract any information out of this huge data set which we which we obtain uh, many a times while doing this multi-dimensional parameter sweep so that's your five minutes learning about 
how to use sliders for multidimensional data processing. Hope you like the video and it will be of some help to you. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more tutorial videos.